hey, I'm just going to give you a short tutorial on how to program or how to set up an embedded system and program it. Um, if you're coming from YouTube, you can find a link to the schematic in a link in the description page. And if you're coming from Instructables, the schematic is on the step which you are currently viewing this video. Um, going into the schematic here at the center, we have the 18 Mega 320p um, with the pin on the far side from you is pin 1 to 14, 15 to 28. There's a pull-up resistor on the reset pin and also a 0.1 ceramic decoupling capacitor across the VCC and ground pins on the AT Mega 320AP. You can also see with the green and red wires that it's connected to ground and power respectively and that the two power rails in the back and closest to you here are bridged together with these red wires. Uh, moving on to the power circuit, which consists of this uh, linear voltage regulator and these two decoupling capacitors. This one's a 10 microfarad electrolytic decoupling capacitor that <clears throat> smooths out any output ripple from the linear voltage regulator, which takes in, which has a ground pin in the center and has the input voltage here and also outputs 5 volts on the furthest pin to the left here and it is that potential difference that this decouple the decoupling capacitor smooths out this is a 100 microfarad capacitor that smooths out the input voltage um, also over here I added a a uh, series LED with a resistor which is connected to pin 12 on the AT Mega 320P. The cathode of the LED connects to ground here and the anode connects to the other leg of this resistor. Here's a better perspective on the ISP header pins. Um, here you can see the wires that are connected to it. The ISP header pins are important because they are your interface to your computer and they are going to be the way in this example where you are going to be programming the AT Mega 320P. Um, it's also the simplest and easiest to learn first. The pins are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And pin 1 connects to MISO. Pin 2 connects to power. Pin 3 connects to S clock. Pin 4 back here connects to Mosey. Pin 5 connects to the reset and pin 6 finally connects to the ground. <clears throat> In this case I'm using the AVR ISP MK2. Now that we looked at the hardware we will program the software using Atmel Studio 6. This is an IDE that can be downloaded for Windows. Now let's open up the program. It's free and you can find it online very easily by Google searching Atmel Studio. Here in the main window we will be opening a new project. Go to File, New, Project. Here make sure that GCC C executable project is selected and I'm going to rename this project to Blink 1 Hertz. Click OK. Now here is where you select what processor you're using. I'm we're using the 18 Mega 320p. So and to the right here you can see all the supported tools that are used for programming and here your list is the AVR ISP MK2 that I'm using. Once you get to your coding screen, here I'm going to just open up a text editor holding the blink code that 
I'm using. You can find the link to this code in the description. I'm just going to copy and paste it right in here. This is a code that I got from SparkFun, and it will blink all the ports uh, on and off for a second. And going down here to the main function, you can see the code enters the while loop where all the ports turn on, then the code waits for half a second, then all the ports turn off, and then waits another half a second. Going further down, you can see how the delay millisecond works. It's simply a software implemented delay that just keeps the processor busy for a set amount of time. Now we're just going to save this and build the code. This will convert your C program to a hex file. You can see that it was successful and that there were no errors. If you go to the error list, there will be no errors there. That will automatically appear if there's something wrong with your code. Now I'm going to go to the program button and you can see that it automatically selected AVRISP MK2. That's because I have the programmer plugged into my computer via USB. And I also the ISP pins are connected to the header for the time being. I'll show this later. You can also see that it can see the voltage that the programmer is reading on the circuit right now. If I go to memories, this is where you will select your code to upload to the chip. Here you can see the path is off. Um, yeah, my path is in the blink one hertz path and I want uh, and I'm selected in UART so I'm going to browse for it and I'm going to back up to Atmel Studio you can see that there's a folder created for blink one hertz continuing in the debug folder you'll find the hex file you open this and now this will be programmed to the chip You can see that in the bottom everything showed okay. Now we're going to take a look at the circuit. Okay, here's the here's the same circuit again, but this time I added my power source which uh brings in 6 volts to the regulator, so I'm getting 5 volts on the rails now. Um I also have the AVR ISP MK2 plugged into the ISP header pins. And uh, you can see that both lights are green. It's because it's also plugged into my computer, which is going to be kind of hard to tell. But uh, you can just trust me that this is the other end of that plug. Um, you should get both lights as green. Um, if this doesn't get the power on these pins, because remember the pin. The pins 2 and 6 are connected to power and ground, so this this knows if it's getting if the circuit has power. If I unplug it, the light will go red. And plugging it back in will turn that light green again. Oh. If I go ahead and program you can see that this light was flashing and that this also turned to orange which means it's busy and then you can also tell that the light started blinking and that is the basic hello world application